Now anyone that's been on this channel a while knows that I want our game to be umpired consistently and fairly. I know that our game is incredibly hard to umpire, made much harder by the AFL's interpretation changes mid-season. Furthermore, split-second decision making is a bloody hard skill to have and not something that we credit umpires enough with. This is not an attack on any specific umpire. There's a mountain of explanations why the game may be umpired in an unfair or biased manner, the least of which is with intention. I'll be going into some examples in a minute. If you want to skip ahead to those, check the timestamps below. The game I watched the other day, it seemed like one team was umpired with one set of rules and another team with another. I want the teams and coaches to battle it out. I don't want one team to have to fight the umpires and the other team and coach as well to win the game. I just don't think it's fair. And before I have people jumping in with the same old words that umpiring decisions don't influence games, yes they do. It's not even my opinion, it's a fact. I don't mean just one decision either. I mean Bad calls, momentum changes. We all saw the 2021 Grand Final and what momentum can do to win the game. This momentum was caused by Melbourne. Coaching changes, player changes, and they got on top of the Bulldogs. This wasn't an umpire shifting momentum. However, it does happen. Momentum can be shifted by poor decisions by umpires. I'm sure that any footy fan can think of a game where a few decisions or non-decisions didn't go their way and something switched and their team just looked like they were a little bit flat. I think of a free kick like an uncontested clearance. If you're winning the ball in dispute, you're going to give your team the best chance to win. Another note before I get into the examples, free kick count. This is not a good indicator of anything by itself, but if the free kick count is particularly imbalanced, it might be an indicator that something is a little bit off. But when you start digging and looking at some soft free kicks that went to one team and some soft free kicks that didn't go to another team, it all starts to add up. Additionally, and this is not something I'll go over in this video, the home team is significantly more likely to win the free kick count. The home team on the weekend was Fremantle. They were losing the free kick count 17 to 9 at one point in the game. Another point on the free kick count, all free kicks aren't equal. Context matters. Some cost goals, some cost forward 50 entries, some non-decisions cost goals as well. Others are almost inconsequential, like an arm chop when a player takes the mark anyway. Okay, let's get into the examples. Holding without the ball, the Freo player's arm is getting held before he dives on the ball. If the umpire was looking closely, he would have seen that. But obviously, a tough call. A 50 50 decision going against the Dockers here. Here's two players tackling the Freo player. Dunkley lands straight in the back. I don't know when this is not called in the back, but for some reason the umpire doesn't seem to look at that and then pings him for dragging the ball back in, which is a genuine free kick. Oh, sick. Bond stops props, has an absolute eternity, is tackled to the ground and still is given an opportunity to dispose of the ball. This leads to a shot on goal. I just don't understand how this is not called holding the ball. It's bizarre to me. Uh, this to me doesn't look like he's got prior opportunity. As soon as his arms are free, he goes to correctly dispose of the ball. I'm not sure if he did get a hand to it, but I would have thought the umpire sees this as a genuine attempt at a disposal rather than a throw. Also could have been a high tackle. You got Bond. I think he tries to take on the tackler. He gets his arms free and then doesn't dispose of the ball correctly. I felt like the umpires were pretty tight on Freo for this, but then the Bulldogs players seem to get away with it. Um, this one here, I, I think by the rule, this is uh, should be play on, but I'm just highlighting that there seems to be a different standard for Fremantle versus the Doggies players. This to me looks like he changes direction, takes on the player, and then doesn't dispose of the ball correctly, leading to a goal. Some umpires probably see that as no prior opportunity, but the direction change for me was an indicator that he had prior opportunity, and therefore he needs to handball the ball. Here's a holding against Schultz. It looks like he pulls back the player there. So yeah, that's a good free kick and good eyes by the umpire there. 
I just wish it was found both ways. I mean, there were numerous times in this game where the Bulldogs players went past the ball and tackled players, and obviously so, like tackled them to the ground, like in this example here with English, and no free kicks called. It's just bizarre to me that you're going to pick up these subtle little holds and then not these obvious ones off the ball that stop the Fremantle player getting to the contest. Another one here on lob. The umpire's 10 or 20 metres away there, directly in front. There's no excuse for that. That's not even a split second decision. That is a player getting held for close to a second, obstructing his run at the ball. This one here, again, I, I don't think the Freo player really has the ball. And anyway, he kind of loses it when he gets tackled and then he's pushed in the back out of the contest. So tackled without the ball or pushed in the back. It has to be one of those. Here, Caleb Daniel drags down the Dockers player after disposing of the ball. No free kick. Just bizarre. How, how can you miss that? The umpire's pretty close there as well. Um, a few of these are sort of just highlighting that I think there's a bit of inconsistency in the application of the rule. There's a little touch there and it was called in the back. Here you've got a player getting potentially pushed in the back there and also a spoil which I don't think was genuinely trying to go for the ball because he hits the body. Um, and then here, just a, a subtle n bit of body work there that pushes the dogs player under the ball, and that's called in the back. But to me, as a neutral fan looking at this, it just seems that, yeah, the umpires are looking for that soft contact for the Bulldogs, but then for the Fremantle players, they're not looking for that same contact. And then you look at these examples and you see that the free kick was about 17-9 um, with 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. It starts to paint a bit of a picture. Yeah, as always, let me know your thoughts. I'm sure that I'll get a few mad doggy supporters here but again i'm a neutral fan and i want the game to be umpired fairly this is finals footy the teams don't get another chance after this and if the umpires aren't giving the teams a fair crack it's just unacceptable to me as a fan